Hi guys, uh, Bobby here, we have Bing here and Fadil And this is Michael And Hi. today we want to introduce you to what is known as ester based engine oils Now some of you might know what is that you know uh, I myself was intrigued as well when I met Michael uh, Don't worry, I'm on pilot assist <laughs> <laughs> So um, Michael actually has great knowledge about this Ester is the it's a group 5 based oil Engine oils are predominantly from 5 different groups yep. You've got groups 1, 2 and 3 which are derived from crude oils uh, Derived from what? Sorry? Crude, one, two, oil. Three. crude oil. Yeah, or mineral oil. Uh, mineral based oils. Mineral based oil will be group 1, 2, and 3. Yes. Okay. Then you've got group 4, which is uh, PAOs or uh, poly alpha olefins. They are hydrocarbons. Okay. Okay. And the group 5 based oils, which are esters. Esters are in this group. So, let's say if I buy a fully synthetic oil outside, mm -hmm. what is that regarded as? Okay. That uh, would be a group. <clears throat> now, there are different schools of thought. Yep. With regards to what actually constitutes a fully synthetic oil, yep. are mostly group 3 base. Okay. Group 3 base. Group 3 base. Okay. Which means they are still derived from uh, whatever that is dug up in the yeah, sea. Yeah, from crude oil, correct. Okay. Uh, but they have undergone a process called hydrocracking. Okay. And uh, this hydrocracking process has uh, changed the molecular structure of the crude oil to such an extent that it can be termed as synthesized. Uh, okay. This this ruling came about I think between the court case between Mobile One and Castrol okay. many many years ago where Mobile One sued Castrol for using a group 3 based oil yeah, yeah. Uh, and called it fully synthetic when Mobile One was still using group 4 based oils for their fully synthetic products. Really? Yeah. Wow, interesting. Yes. When did uh, this happen? Oh, many many years ago. Okay, I should research on that. Yeah, can't quite remember when. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> so, Mobi One lost. And uh, nowadays, most, if not all, the oil and gas companies use a Group 3 based oil for their fully synthetic products. Uh. Oh. Yeah, so that's one school of thought. Yep. And the other school of thought is that all fully synthetic products should be, at the very least, Group 4 base, which yep. is the poly alpha olefin PO. And the yeah. poly poly al <laughs> poly alpha olefin poly alpha yeah, olefin yeah, the, the PAOs it's a man made it's a man -made base it's, yeah it's oil. chemical uh, it's derived from a chemical reaction okay yeah similarly to esters so it is more resistant <coughs> to uh, what do you call that the, the breakdown of engine oils or heat or something like that mm, they are more they are better for higher temperatures uh, yeah yeah because their molecular structure makes it better uh, I mean an interesting fact to note about esters is that it is the base oil of choice for all jet engine lubricants all jet engines use ester oil all jet engine lubricants must be made from esters they must be an ester base and I heard uh, those who frequent track days and all that they also use ester base right yes because, uh, simply because it's better for higher temperatures it can withstand better la. It can withstand better, it reduces breakdown better yep. uh, Another benefit about esters is that uh, PAOs are hydrocarbon based yep. Esters are not So yep. when they break down and all that They, really, they don't really leave any residue, residue. In, in your engine uh, uh, So the, the, the black stuff that we get is because no, the, Of the breakdown of uh, hydrocarbons of, of hydrocarbon. That is carbon basically So the carbon eventually will turn to sludge Ah, yeah. So that means if it is fully, uh, no, no, okay. Let me let me clear that word. There is hundred percent synthetic, and there is fully synthetic, right? Oh, to right. to let right. everybody understand better. Right, we try and uh, yeah, make a differentiation at that point. So ester is hundred percent synthetic. Yes, because yes. it's it's memang man-made. It's memang <coughs> chemical <coughs> reaction derived. Correct. Whereas fully synthetic is still something that you dug out from the sea. And then with chemical process, add additives and all that, right? Yeah. To make it more resistant. Yes. So your uh, people who use your engine oils, I mean, I know that you are a prolific uh, classic car collector. Yes. Right? right. Can you can you roughly name a few that that that, that you have? 
on our customer list? Uh, no, I mean you, you, the cars oh, that you the, own. The cars that I own? Okay. The, the classic cars. The classic cars, okay. I have a two-stroke Saab from the C 60s. Saab? Yeah. Okay. I, I have a 73 Alfa Romeo, uh, GT. Yes. Uh, let me see what else. What, what else? I've got a 76 uh, Escort Mark II Sport. Escort Mark II Sport. Yep. Got an E12 BMW M535i. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, some modern classics. I've got a 124 E36 AMG. I've got a W163 ML55 AMG. <laughs> yeah. So yes. <laughs> okay. To name a few lah. <laughs> to name to name a few. Yes. And and what I <coughs> so your your customers that that uh, buys your oil. Mm. They range from classic cars to everyday everyday cars, right? Yes, you know, from yeah to classic cars all the way to the current day supercars, like, like even even like cars like Honda Cities and all that, right? Oh yes, yes, car, your everyday cars, your supercars. Yeah, uh, we have customers. But from what I learned, I mean, I, I learned a lot more about Esther based on after I met you, mm -hmm. but. We take a right turn here. Yeah? We do take right. Okay, okay. Yeah. But aren't ester based oils extremely expensive? Uh, because from what I know, they are about like what one anywhere from one hundred twenty ringgit, one hundred fifty ringgit a liter. Well, yes and no. Um, we are not that expensive. Uh, but they sell expensive because they know it's. But the product, it, is the base oil itself is expensive already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's roughly about twice the price of uh, PAO mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and per kg like the raw material. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> the base oil itself is expensive. Therefore, the end product will be expensive. Yeah. Uh, but uh, not to such an extent where it's about 100, 120 ringgit per liter mm. Because uh, a lot of times that's down to the company that does the. Marketing. Yeah. Some, somebody's got to pay for the marketing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, market selling price, not what cost they brought in, mah, right? Yeah. That's what I I saw. Oh, then in my impression, oh, this one is really good stuff. But you only use it uh, when you go for a track and all that. Mm. But you you don't want to price it that way because you want everybody to to yeah. to be able to use it. Yes. Yeah. Enjoy a better product for a reasonable price. And yours is like what? How much per liter? Uh, currently we're selling around sixty ringgit per US quart. Uh, US quad is yeah, it? slightly under a liter, which is zero point nine four six uh, liters. Uh. What Americans are? Uh, Americans. Really, uh, this is their invisible trade embargo, right? I don't know. <laughs> they they just make you make it harder for anyone to order things. It's mm, like oh, yes. I need a two hundred fifty three inch, and then the German supplier will be oh, that is in CM, and uh, <laughs> who pays for the <laughs> the small decimals? <laughs> So zero point nine four six liters. Nine four six liters is one quart. Is one US quart. It's called quart. Quart. Q U A R T. And your pack size comes <coughs> in per quart. No, no big bottles and no. all that. Yeah, our pack size comes in one US quart. And it's fully imported fully from US. It's fully imported from the US. It's been like that for the last thirty three years. How long has Camlude been? Uh, okay, Camlude is US global. The American manufacturer has been around since 1965. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have been importing it since 1985. Well, importing it into Malaysia since 1985. Yep. Uh, yes. So we su we supply the Malaysian Singapore markets. Okay. Mm. Okay. And um, the the customers that always use your oil, mm. one of their, their the the main testimony would be. When they do full yeah. overhaul, they open up and they see that it's... Yeah, the engines are usually sparking clean. That is uh, unbelievable, you know. I I mean, I've saw... Sparkling I've, clean. Sparking clean. I've, I've, I've seen some some uh, brochures or pictures that, I mean, from, from, from Camlube, right? Yep. And then I look at the picture, right? It's, it's literally unbelievable because our impression is, uh, oh, you open an engine, you expected all, the, all those sludge and all that inside. Correct. And it's none. Yeah, yes. So Sorry, you don't get any of that. Sorry, Fadil. Yeah. yeah. Tapi kalau orang tu dia kereta lama. Uh huh. Lepas tu dia pakai uh, Esther base oil. Uh. Eh, mm. Dia akan cuci lain je tu ataupun macam mana? Ah yes, very good question, Fadil. Uh, Esther is a natural detergent. 
Oh. So, uh, I mean, I have photos of a Proton Prebe with 70,000 km on the clock. Yep. Uh, this poor chap has had had to replace two turbochargers okay. in a span of 70,000 km. Yeah. Uh, oh my simply, God. Because, simply because of the sludge, sludge in his oil ways. Yep. And uh, yeah, ever since he started using Camry, I've been monitoring his uh, progress. Every time he has an oil change, yep. we open his head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you can see marked differences uh, between when we first started and where it is now. Actually, he's due an oil change soon. Actually. Oh. Next, next week or so. Kalau ada orang masalah sludge, apa yang dia perlu buat adalah beli lah Ester oil. Then, I mean, that is the. That's the. Sorry, easy. Wait, 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 wait. In front again. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Sorry. That's the. Easiest and possibly the most cost effective solution. Sebab lah. kalau tidak orang akan pergi buat carbon punya clean up. Carbon cleaning and all that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, carbon cleaning does have its benefits. Yep, uh, yep, I yep. think a lot of the times the carbon cleaning is to, the, is to clean the carbon from the combustion. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, where you Because now direct injection from the top of your pistons and all that. Yep, yep, where, the, yep. where the oil doesn't actually reach. La. Oil doesn't reach there, so, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So to a certain extent, carbon cleaning does help its users as well. Uh. Any form of cleaning actually helps, right? Mm, yeah. So, uh, we're, we're now... Oh, sorry, you want to show him. Yeah. We're now headed to this interesting uh, workshop. This guy is... Uh, uh, sorry, Gold Certified. Uh, Master Mechanic. He's Master a Mechanic of, of Porsche. Yeah. And... He did his own study on what oils to use for his customer and he picked Kamloops ester base oil. When I was first introduced to him, yeah, and to the time that he actually decided to use Kamloops, it was one and a half years. Because he was testing out all other Indian oils? Uh, yes, he was testing out a lot of the other Indian oils. <laughs> nice, yeah. nice. So we're gonna go have a look and uh, listen to what he has to say. Now, if you see this on the streets, you know you struck a million dollar because uh, after you restore it yeah, like what uh, Michael said just now it's worth a million bucks that's a 930 proper now this is the place uh, where the master technique oh look at those air cool engines nice Leo! Good morning, good morning. Hi! How are you? How are you? I'm good. <laughs> I'm here to talk to you. Talk to me about what? About why you decided to not listen to Porsche and use other engine oils. <laughs> because you did your own uh, testing, right? Yes, simply better, yeah. We got, we got a lot of customer references. Yep, yep. Yeah. People were telling me and texting me in the middle of the night that the car feels lighter, revs faster. Whoa, uh, we whoa. opened up some engines after using Chemlu yep, yep. 5 oils and the engines were super clean. Yeah. We had situations where a customer burst a, a water pipe and overheated the engine, yep. yet the engine oil was still keeping up stable and the engine was not broken in the end. Wow. Although the engines were overheated. You want to bring us around your place? They didn't see us. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, around. let's go see around your place. Oh, what is that? Brilliant. Damn. Brilliant. Very nice. So we built from 1984. Yep. Uh, this car is going to go back to its original condition. Yep. And it will be running on Chemloop 20W50 as well. Nice. How long have you been doing Porsches? Uh, since the mid 90s. Mid 90s. Yeah. Joined the factory in the mid 90s, mid end 90s. Yep. Uh, working for Porsche Asia Pacific uh, for the past, for the longest time actually, to be honest. And uh, before that, for Porsche Middle East, yeah. the Porsche factory in Stuttgart Zuffenhausen for a short stint uh, in Finland to support the Porsche Cam 4. So if I want a Porsche, I, I know I'm in good hands if I. Absolutely. Come over to you. Absolutely. You're nice. in the best hands. <laughs> Lovely, lovely. So, you said that you did your own uh, research on Chemloop. On Chemloop, yeah. We, we initially, we were not tied up. To, we, were, we decided not to tie up with any oil supplier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just simply because uh, we probably get 
seven visits a week by different oil suppliers. <laughs> to sell their oil, right? <laughs> now, generally, that's that's not a bad thing, and I really believe that all these oils have really good qualities, and mm -hmm. uh, they have their own good points uh, and reasoning uh, of, pro of, of, of of running them into ca in cars. But um, what actually triggered me was when we tried the Chemlub in the. Um, in the early, the early times when we started opening, when, when I met Michael, we tried it out a couple of times. What really impressed me was we used Chem Lube in a sludged up engine. It was a, not a Porsche, it was a BMW that yeah. uh, we had a common friend of ours. Uh, yeah. We were just fixing up a valve cover gasket and as we opened the valve cover, the engine was completely full of oil sludge. Um, well, oil sludges surely have to do with temperature and stability of oil, and that's when we decided we try uh, we try a different oil. In that case, Chemlu. Yeah. Instead of rebuilding the engine, what would be the next course on that particular uh, car, we decided to try Chemlu, do three oil changes every 5,000 kilometers, see how it goes, and uh, yeah, the moment we check, uh, uh, one and a half years later, the engine is actually cleaning up. So nice. that's actually quite a triggering point. Nice. We don't we don't have carbon in uh, in um, in ester-based oils, obviously, and I think that does a very good job. So it's zero carbon. We don't have carbon, and we nice. have still we have still 100% synthetic oil. Nice. Let's, Let's go. Let's have, have a look. look at his face. Look at all this. These are all the uh, the certifications, right? Nice. Oh, hello there. What's his name? Rocky. Hi Rocky. That was a, a, a street, yeah. a street dock that was run over by a lorry two times. And really? So, yeah. And so we have decided to uh, to take him in six yeah. months ago. So now and he's, he's, he's living now, a lucky life. Yeah, he's now pretty much the mascot of German Tech, and he likes Gem Lube as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't bite the bottles like he does with others. Huh? <laughs> oh yeah. So this is the one that they're using. Very modest packaging, I must say. Yeah, the design is really very modest. Yeah, uh, yeah. But Chemlu boils are used in uh, airplanes and are used for competition races. And uh, it's always where reliability and, uh, and performance is, is nice. most required. Nice. Yeah. And even though ester-based oils usually for racing or even for airplanes probably cost a little bit more, but in the end of the day, the cars that we are servicing here yeah. are usually in the half a million to a million range. Yeah. Uh, some of them uh, reaching up to two million even individual models. I do not believe that we should actually start saving on oil and go back to the carbon oils. Now, I also understand, having been with Porsche for the longest time, yeah. that Porsche uh, recommends Mobile One. Yeah. But so it is also a fact that Porsche recommended in the 80s uh, shell oil and castrol oils were used in between. It's a marketing uh, collaboration. Uh, generally, I believe it's really a matter of... Uh, I think all of these oils, group 3 oils, are pretty good. Yeah. Uh, good for road use, surely approved for that. Um, but in the end, it's, it comes down to... Um, who gives the production line or the manufacturer the best deal for the buck? Huh? And in Understand. that case, for the past 15-20 uh, years, it's simply Mobil, Exxon yeah. Mobil in yeah. Texas, United States. Unlike the belief of many, uh, Mobil One is not a German engine oil, huh? yeah. and so Chemlub is from the United States as well. But we could go for any kind of oils. Uh, there are there is a very big list of approved engine oils for Porsche. So Understand. it's not uh, Porsche is not being too picky what engine oils are supposed to be approved or not approved. Okay. I mean, your engine oil must be very lousy not to be approved. I always learn a lot when I chat with you. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, this is his place. Really, really nice. <laughs> yeah. So this this looks like Germany, right? Look at that. You walk into any German. Uh, the whole place looks really, really German, and it's nice to have him here setting up this place. Uh, look at that, some <laughs> German plus. Yeah. So, if you're looking for a Porsche expert, you you know this guy knows his stuff, right? So, yeah. Interesting morning that uh, we get to learn more things, and we will continue. Um, 
seek out to I mean we learn ourselves when we uh, share this all this information with you all so it's just nice right because you all have you all have a job right you all are in office all day right we can be out here helping you to look around check around stuff and uh, just oops what is going on with my thing I love these classic 911s they're beautiful yeah nice so yeah there you have it so today we learn about ester based oil um, fully synthetic no carbon that's why no sludge when you when you burn and uh, like what Michael said ester based or ester is a natural de detergent it is able to clean up the engine bay so um, I will give it a try I will definitely give it a try Bing has been trying it and she says she likes it yeah all right cheers here is a three liter air cool turbo engine look at that from the turbo it goes direct into the intake no intercooler look at that so this has this is a rebuilt engine for the car outside that I showed you hold on a minute it's for the car yeah for this one once it is rebuilt this thing will be worth a million bucks yeah let me let me show you guys something this wheel tail here look at this spoiler they're made of rubber soft touch nice <laughs> I never knew that I really never knew that uh, you can fashion a spoiler out of soft touch it's not plastic it's rubber nice interesting and this is original since back then it's a little Porsche crest there yeah. nice yep this is a uh, German tech that Leo establishes here you should know that it's not easy for a foreigner like Leo to come here and you know set up shops, set up businesses and all that um, and we feel grateful when someone of his caliber or knowledge actually comes to Malaysia and set up shop here you know it's, it's always nice to have people who, who have this kind of knowledge setting up shop in Malaysia it's good thank you <laughs> what makes you love Malaysia? Uh, there's no winter time here. There's no winter time. No winter time. We, we love. I love winter time from the 20th of December until the 1st of January. <laughs> and I would love it to snow so I can put up my Christmas tree and pretend yeah. uh, that we are somewhere in a four season country. But yeah. unfortunately, in Germany, we have we're pretty much sick. Half of the year is cold. So Do you still go back for Christmas? Uh, not for Christmas. I try to keep it in summer. Yeah. I try to keep away from this. It's not really snow. It's just wet yeah. and cold. <laughs> so uh, I believe it's much more... Uh, it's more... I, I like the temperature here. I find it more friendly. Uh, of course, you. you need an air conditioning system to sleep. <laughs> uh, in Europe, you would just open a window. But yeah, uh, yeah after all, it's... Uh, it's it's a good it's a good country. You you I don't have jackets here like I have in Europe, <laughs> and I do generally like the people. To be honest, the people here are more open-hearted. Sometimes it's an advantage, sometimes it's a disadvantage. You yeah, see, if a yeah. customer is very dissatisfied with you, yeah. he won't tell you right in your face. He will just walk out and he will never come back. Uh, in uh, Europe, however, the, you would have the customer banging the table and making a lot of noise. You sit down, you discuss, and you still maintain your customer. So it's very difficult uh, and you have to have a very a sort of a fine feeling yeah, yeah. to how the customer feels. Not yeah. every customer who smiles in your face and shakes your hand and leaves is a customer that will come back. He may be unhappy with something, so it's up to us here in the front to find out what, how to satisfy the customer, how to make him happy, yeah. and how to make him feel that he's got, he's got a performance, he's got, he's got a product for the money he paid for. Uh, yes. And if, that, if that's not there, 
you won't see the customer anymore. And I think that's a dangerous spot in Malaysia. That's that, uh, I would say, that politeness that Asia has, that in Germany we... I mean, they are polite people, but that's one of the... We, we tend to shy off from exactly. confrontation. Yeah. You know? I realize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in Europe, we usually go for the confrontation, yeah. and discuss things out, and yeah. then we can shake hands and we can walk away from each other. In Asia, unfortunately, this is not really always. Some, of course, but it's not always. The case. So you stay here for long? Um, yeah, it's, uh, in 2019, it will be 15 years. Oh, nice. Yep, guys. So, yep, that's German Tech, and that's Leo.